Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode uh, 262 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. And you know what? The Tassie era is officially over. I'm no longer Tasmanian. I never was. All right, that place is a hole. You know where I am? You know who I who I am on the inside and who I've always been? I've been someone who's just straight out of Frankston, okay? And i got the t-shirt to prove it. Straight out of Frankston t-shirts are on sale right now for Patreon supporters, and they're going to be on sale later this week for everybody else. So if you want early access, jump on Patreon. You also get uh, bonus episodes, uh, full episodes of the Spearhead Sundays podcast every single week because these bad boys are shorter than they could be unless you pay for it. All right, so good. That's happening. Got a little plug in, loosebears.com. Also, get your tickets to Melbourne. That starts in two weeks. Less than that, actually. Get your tickets now. Cool. Right. So I'm no longer Tasmanian and I'm feeling really, really good about it. Okay. Because I didn't have any relatives over there to have sex with. So what's the point? You know, like what's the, what's the benefit of, uh, of, of being Tasmanian if you have no cousins living there to have sex with? There's really no benefit. Like, what do you, what do you get? Racist neighbors? Cool. I can get that anywhere, right? Anywhere in Australia, I can get that. But the, but the point is, right, I went to Tasmania. I went back to, to the little rental that we had. I went back uh, uh, this weekend to just pick up all of the stuff that uh, Keelan and Rosie left because they're lazy. Hey, hey. What? <laughs> I sent you back, all right, as an emergency on short notice. To get to, our things. To pack my, my things first and then if you had room, your stuff also. <laughs> that's what I told you. That's what you agreed upon. <laughs> I, you promised me. You said, I right, don't worry. I don't need underwear or clothes. I'll take back the film chair, the office chairs for the, for the, for the film office. I don't think I could even get most of my things in. No, there's a whole bunch of stuff of yours. Actually, that's still there. Yeah, like what? No, I I brought it all. There was a there was a lot of things. You the, oh. you left so many like traces of you, like in that fucking house. I I go there thinking that oh yeah, well Keelan and Rosie they've got all of their stuff. I thought I did a good job of cleaning up. Rosie did a great job. <laughs> I walked into her room. All right, immaculate. Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was the perfect space. Okay, even the fucking sheets were off the bed. I walk into your room. There's there's fucking Wiggles paraphernalia. There's a there's a DVD disc of some TV series that I haven't heard of, like <laughs> season four, disc three. You didn't you didn't bring any DVDs, but you did leave one there somehow. Yeah. And uh, and then and like a lot of food as well uh, that I just found in your room, uh, also in my room. But I didn't have a chance to pack up. Okay, so I get there and the place is dusty as fuck. It's a two hundred year old. <laughs> house that's really not fit for living anymore but that's how we live for months uh and i get there and look if you thought there was a rat problem before mm. try leaving the place silent for three months with food <laughs> rotting in the fridge and i'll tell you about a rat problem i got there and dude there there was in the kitchen where the rats always were there was like a giant pile of dirt <laughs> that had clearly been like taken out of the wall oh. by all of the mice that like <laughs> must have been digging through the wall and there's a, next to the fridge there's like a giant like dust pile of like drywall that the rats have just been excavating for months while we weren't there to scare them away <laughs> Yeah. So the the place is like however much progress we made in getting rid of them, it's got to be way worse now mm. because we just haven't. With the, it must have been silent. So like, oh, we can do whatever we want. Um, <laughs> so we yeah we took the boat over to Tassie and within within one day. I just heard the most fucked story ever, right? So uh, I'm in Tassie, so of course Greeley calls me. I have a chat to him on the phone, and uh, I'm only there for like two days, and I got to pack up an entire house and then do a giant drive. And by that I mean sit in the passenger seat on my phone for ages, which is very taxing on me. You're lucky I'm doing this episode. Um, and uh, so Greeley calls me. He goes, "Man, uh, we should uh, we should hang out. I'm on a boat. I'm about to go f uh, fishing for for eight hours." And I went, "That sounds lovely, man. I can't. I have to. Uh, I have to." pack up all of my clothes that might be covered in rat shit. Sorry, I'm having much more fun today, right? But then he goes, oh, no worries. Hey, I've got a story for you. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And he goes, uh, my cousin, I'm like, here we fucking go, all right? This is about to get Tasmanian as fuck here, okay? So he goes, my cousin is uh, is anti-vax. And I was like, oh, yeah? And he goes, yeah, he's, he's so anti-vax that uh, he had a friend with COVID 
who was vaccinated, and he said, see, I told you the vaccine does nothing, and also I think that COVID's not a big deal. Mm. And to prove it, you know what he did, Keelan? Got COVID? No, well, yes, yeah. but would you like to know how? He said, I'll, I know, I'll prove to you that COVID ain't shit, yep. and anyone with it is a little baby. Okay. Spit in my mouth. <laughs> and he got his mate to spit in his mouth who had COVID. Oh. And then, of course, he gets COVID. Yeah. This guy won't take the vaccine, but he'll get his mate to spit in his mouth. Look, be anti-vax, but also be anti-spitting and uh, getting someone to spit in your mouth. You have to be both of those things. You can't be worried about the dangers of, of the vaccine, but you're happy to get let an infected person spit in your fucking mouth. <laughs> also, there's other ways to get COVID, you know, just like hang out, go for a drive together with the windows up. <laughs> did, did, uh, was it really about getting COVID or was it more about getting someone to spit in your mouth, you know? <laughs> Maybe there's some ulterior motive there. And then he went to the... Uh, he went to the shops knowing he had COVID with a T-shirt on saying that I, I'm anti-vax and I might be positive. Please stay away. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. That's so Tasmanian. Very Tassie. Very good. So, yeah, I was I was there for like eight hours and I just heard the most fucked story I've ever heard in my life. So until next time, Tasmania. Uh, it was good going back. Uh, the, the dog, Bobby, she hated the boat. Right? We had to go on the Spirit of Tasmania and we took her with us. Her first, uh, first big trip... She's used to big, long drives because we do that all the time, uh, but uh, she's never been on a boat before. So we take her on the boat and they just put them in like metal cages, like big metal cage, put her in there, leave her in there. And uh, at first she was like, yeah, cool. I've got a cage at home. I know what these are like. I can do this. I can, I'll sit in here for 20 minutes and I'll be silent and they'll let me out. And then we said, no, it'll be about nine hours. And she oh. went, sorry, I don't speak English. <laughs> I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> uh. Yeah, poor dog. So we leave and we leave and she's fine, right? She's not, no barking, no nothing. And then we, we get back and she's also fine. And she didn't piss or shit in the crate. We had wipes ready. We had towels. We had water and bottles ready to like clean clean off the, the dog. All the other dogs had like pissed and shit in the box. I was incredibly impressed at her bladder control, right? Uh, and but then on the way back, she worked out that that this this particular cage is not a twenty minute, you know, Jazz and Lewis going down to the shops cage. <laughs> this is a nine hour getting rocked <laughs> next to other dogs like barking and pissing above her, dripping down on her head type trip. So we put her in the in the box and she's like, oh, I know how to get into the box. And then we close the cage. She's like, hang on, this is, this is one of those nine hour boxes. And she starts barking and going, no, this is bullshit. This Aww. sucks. Don't leave me again. Like yipping and barking and I felt terrible. And uh, But it's okay because as soon as we went upstairs onto the boat on the way back, a car alarm went off for two hours. So... <laughs> that sucks. I was like, I was talking to other people on the boat. I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. Why can't they just let the dog come into the cabin? And then someone was like, oh, well, what if a dog jumped off the edge? I'm like, oh, that would definitely happen mm. for sure. Like some guy, some, some dickhead would ruin it for everyone because he'd be like, oh, no, nah, man, my dog's cool. You know, he doesn't need a leash. I trust him. And then he'd be like, and he'd be like dog overboard. And then he'd be like, he'd be confused about why the boat wasn't turning around, you know? There's no way the boat stops for a dog. I don't think so. No. I feel like a lot of the when when a when a human falls off a cruise ship, I feel like uh, them stopping and turning around is mostly for show. Have have you ever heard of someone falling off a cruise ship or jumping off a cruise ship and then and then the story ends with but it's all right cuz we found them. Mm. I don't think I've ever I think heard of that. The impact of the the like how 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 far you jump would actually kill you. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I truly believe that most of the turning the ship around is to is to make the other passengers feel better. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like seat belts on an airplane. You know, it's like we, we all know that it's not if we crash, it's not going to do anything, but it does feel nice to clip in. You know, it's like oh, this feels good. It feels like this is the right thing to do. It's really like that. It's like uh, it's like wearing a mask. <laughs> If you're a right-wing person, it doesn't do anything. It just makes you feel good. Take that muzzle off. I love those guys. Those guys are like that are like really holding on. Do you reckon that 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 OG anti-vaxxers look at like the new anti-vaxxers like fucking 
sellouts. Like, come on, dude. Now you're on board. You know, I've been doing this before it was cool. <laughs> I feel like a real big appeal of being an anti-vaxxer is, is like being like one of a couple thousand. Like, <laughs> we know the real truth. <laughs> and now there's like a giant proportion of people who are like, maybe, maybe we were told that these things were a lot better than they actually are. And then, and then all these like OG anti vaxxers are like, dude, I don't even, I don't even like believe in the polio one. <laughs> like, there's gonna be like, there's gonna be like a new name for like the real anti vaxxers like the anti, the anti polio vac vaccine guys, like those, like those dudes that I interviewed, like those are the real anti vaxxers you know, like that neo guy, he's the OG, and they need a new name. They they need to be part of a new group. Like the uh, the neo anti vaxxers that's good. Like neo Nazi, you know? Because now everyone on Twitter who says an off color joke is a Nazi, but the real Nazis are the neo Nazis. You know, you, they they they're the same group. They get called the same thing, but they're different. They're the real ones. Anyway, guys, I'm <laughs> rambling. <laughs> So we got back from Tassie and I'm so fucking glad to be done with it. Now I'm now I'm no longer paying rent for a place I don't live. That's hey, that's so good. Did you get the bond back? Uh I I doubt it. I don't know, but I doubt it. Okay? Because here's the thing, all right? L now let's incriminate incriminate myself further. Now, you know what? Actually, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, sign up to the Patreon if you would like to hear that. I'll say it there. You'll love it. I'll tell you. I'll tell you in about uh, in forty minutes, Keelan. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll be on Patreon. Okay, all right. But don't send it to the real estate agent. <laughs> Hawking Stewart, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Um. Anyway, so the dude, the one thing about the Tassie house was the fucking stairs. I told you guys about the stairs in the house. There are stairs up to my room that are they're not stairs, it's a ladder, you know? Like the the balls of my feet barely fit on each step. Now my dog, Bobby, real great at going up the stairs. <sighs> on the way up, nailed it. In fact, loved going up. Would go up the stairs you know, against our wishes. We would say, don't go up the stairs. I'm going up the fucking stairs. I want to go up there. We're like, no one's up there. I'm up there. I want to see what's going on. This is sick. Let me up the stairs, right? And then the stairs are so fucking steep that the first time she went down the stairs, she went down four steps perfectly. I'm like, that's how you do it. And she's like, no, I reckon from here I have to jump. <laughs> and, and then she just jumps and then goes down six steps, lands, and by lands I mean rolls, Ugh. and then slides down the stairs. But it's okay because she's an American staffy. She's indestructible. <laughs> she doesn't feel pain. The only thing the dog fear feels is fear. Like, that's it. She's, which I don't know why because I've never seen her experience a consequence in her life. You know? She doesn't feel pain. I've watched her run full pelt into a brick wall, and she's <laughs> like, why, man, why did I slow down? <laughs> <laughs> so then... She would start going up the stairs and then just standing at the top of the stairs going, help me, I'm stuck, and crying and whinging. Oh. And I'd have to pull her down the stairs and then she would just slide and then go up I'll go up again. We had to end up putting fucking boxes on the stairs so she wouldn't go up them. <laughs> so the, the, the trip to Tassie was a success. The Tassie era is over and we are fully 100% in the Frankston era. I'm no longer a renter. I'm an evil landlord. I don't charge rent to anyone, but, you know, We'll get there. I'm like a, I'm like a, a, a neutral homeowner. You know, I feel like renters on the scheme of things, they they're the good guys. Mm. Homeowners, there's nothing wrong with them, but a lot of people, including myself, look at them and like, yeah, but fuck you, because I feel like every time someone buys a home, they really make it harder for the next person, because it's not like someone gets a bargain. You know, mm. yeah, have you ever heard someone buy a house and go, yeah, we actually went under reserve. I actually got a deal on it. No one else was at the auction. <laughs> this is great. Looks like the property market's going down in this area. Hey, you should, you should get a house next to me. <laughs> Fire sale. No, every time someone buys a house, we pull the ladder up behind us and we go, ha, sucked in. <laughs> sucked in, baby. Now I'm going to exploit the system and get another one. Fuck you. That's how it works. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying that's the game. 
right? But eventually I want to work my way up to evil landlord. No, I want to be I want to be like a like a cool landlord. Mm. You know the type of landlord that like thinks they're cool but at the end of the day they're just like another landlord, mm. but they go, "Nah, man, I'm cool." I want to be like that. <laughs> anyway, I'm losing them. I'm losing the audience here. <laughs> um Trump was on the Full Send podcast. Donald Trump was on a podcast run by frat boys. Uh, and if that really isn't like just the, the perfect representation of his presidency, I don't know what is, right? He started showing up to rallies. He started saying a bunch of crazy shit. He had a wild four years, went on a complete power bender, got way too swept up in everything, sold some merch, a few people wrecked a house that they weren't invited to, and then he's just chilling out with the frat boys that are a little bit too old to be doing that stuff now. That's really, really describes his presidency and good on him. I feel like he's really like living his best life now. I think that this is what Trump wants. He gets to have like a lot of the, a lot of the power, not all of it, but a lot of the power. He gets to go, oh, that's bullshit. I should be there, but I'm actually here. He has a lot more free time to play golf and do silly little things without an entire country going, why are you doing that instead of your job? And he just gets to do whatever he wants and go back to being rich and no one's really scrutinizing him anymore so he can do anything. I think that's what he always wanted. I think that I feel like he he like accidentally caught a giant wave and then and then took advantage of it and then started doing it on purpose. I'm not so sure that he ever really wanted to be president. I think that he really liked the idea of talking about it, causing controversy, getting people saying his name a lot, and then he would just chill. And now he gets to do that forever because he'll probably never win another one or get invited back into the club. He'll just always be the guy that is talking about it. Did you watch the podcast? I watched the bit where uh, Steve... You know, that, that's the guy I, who wears the, the hat and has the shit skin. He's like the guy in charge of everything. I think Steve will do it, right? Uh, the main dude. I watched the part where he gave Trump like a $100,000 watch because... Oh, yeah. That wasn't on the episode. I think that was a clip. Oh, okay. So I haven't watched any of it. I watched no. the clip where, the, where Steve will do it, gave Trump like a $100,000 watch because he sold a Trump 2024 T-shirt with the two of them on it and it made like half a million dollars or something. Mm, crazy. Which which really made me go, I'm I'm in the wrong industry. Like, what am I doing making comedy? I need to make a Steven Crowder switch ASAP, all right? Half a mil on shirts. He ripped off someone else's design and was just like, I'm a Trump supporter, so you should buy it. Dude, grifting is so profitable, left or right. You know, I'm not saying the right wing are bad or the left wing are bad. I'm saying that the grifters know what they're doing, all right? And it's a hustle. And no matter what fucking camp you're in, you, there's a lot of money to be made in saying, oh, I agree with this political majority. And then they all go, oh, well, I have those opinions, so I like that guy, so I'm going to buy the T-shirt. <laughs> so, you know, I'm selling. I'm, I'm out here selling straight out of Frankston T-shirts. What I should what I should say is is what I should be selling is like stay out of Australia T-shirts, you know. <laughs> then all those, those all those guys who hate refugees will be like, yeah, I agree with that. I'm going to buy the T-shirt. But then I have to buy like a like a two hundred dollar psycho watch for Pauline Hanson. <laughs> That's a great uh, joke if you know what that brand is. Um, anyway, you watch the podcast? <laughs> yeah, I did and. It was really, really strange. I was laughing through the whole thing just because some of the stuff he was saying was just absurd. He because it got taken down by YouTube for misinformation. For misinformation. And is that valid? My biggest problem with it is it's uh, any normal person listening to it would know that none of what he's saying is true. He's mm. just blatantly lying. It's not even like he's telling half truths. He's just blatantly lying. He's just telling lies. My my thing is. I don't know about the whole – I don't know about deplatforming someone for lying. Yeah. Because lying's not good and and misinformation is not good, but isn't it, isn't it better to just have the lie out there and let people refute it with the truth 
then then censoring the lie and and which which then amplifies it fucking heaps. Yeah. And then really fires up everyone who believed the lie into going, see, they took it down because they know we're right. I feel like but but then there's a thing of like as we prove with like the 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 cancellation thing, the lie travels so much faster than the truth. Yeah. I, I just I just don't feel right about like taking down people for lying. I, I because it got taken down, I I thought there must be something good in this, so I went and listened to the Spotify. Well, exactly, version. you know that's literally what happens. You take someone's lie down, and then people like you go, "I gotta." I don't out, know. Is that why you were in the Trump hat today? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like full send all those guys, but I thought I just wanted to see what it was like. Yeah. Yeah. Very weird. Um, some of the stuff they talk about also just made me fucking lose it. They talk about Trump being a DJ uh, right yeah. at the very end and talking about what the best song to amp people up is. And they settled on YMCA. Well, he used to play that at his <laughs> yeah. rallies. That's what I mean. I don't think he ever I don't think he ever wanted to be president. I think he wanted to do rallies forever. And he's <laughs> yeah. proving it because all he does now is a rally and a podcast. That's yeah. all he does. He, he does rallies and he, and he gets to do the rally and everyone gets to go, yeah, you should have won. This is bullshit and you're so correct. And he's like, yeah, I'm right. And he can be funny. He can do a bit of crowd work. He can rev them up, boot some people out. And then everyone goes home and the, the country doesn't change. That's what Trump wants. He wants to make a lot of noise and then go home and do fucking nothing. Another really funny thing about it is I don't know anyone in the – in the group, the full sound group, but one of them loves Trump, like yeah. loves his ass. And every time he spoke to him, said would say Mr. President or Mr. <laughs> Trump. And the other guy is like, one of them just kept calling him Donald. <laughs> yeah. Which is pretty disrespectful, I, I'd think. That's good. To the president. Um, and then somebody else, like every time old mate said Mr. President, would like lose his mind laughing in the background. <laughs> He obviously That's didn't good. give a fuck about yeah. having the president on. It was just really funny. That that is so funny. Like I remember, like I remember when Barack Obama did a podcast, and yeah. like it was like Mark Maron's podcast. I think it was like the first one he did, yeah, or something. It was a podcast, and like it was fucking huge news. And like the Secret Service showed up, and there were helicopters, and the compound was locked down. And now we've just gotten to a point where like Trump's just doing frat boy podcasts <laughs> and like talking about DJing and, and what he, and what he would do with this money or, or checks and like, Oh bro, like Mr. President, what's your favorite type of pussy any or Audi, you know, like that's the, that's the level of discourse that we're at now is that ex presidents are going on fucking frat boy podcasts, dude, we're going to have fucking, I was literally going to make a joke and say, we're going to have Kevin Rudd on next week, but that's what he's fucking doing. He's doing Friendly Geordie's podcast. Mm. Like, like we've we've gone... Mainstream media is so... The illusion is so fucking broken that it's more useful and entertaining and fun for everyone for, like, really important, serious people to do dumb dick joke shows than it is to go on fucking ABC and talk about something. It's like, you know, my SBS video... Got 120,000 views. There is no fucking way 120,000 people watch the full program. No mm. way. What are the ratings on SBS? Oh, have a look. I doubt that 120,000 people... I'm talking the whole program, right? Yeah. I'm Like, TV ratings are very overblown. Listen to me, like, like already... Like when I'm proven wrong, I'll go, yeah, but <laughs> listen, listen to me like already go, nah, but the reason why I'm wrong is because of this. But it is true. From working in radio, the ratings that, that they put out there are made up. Do you know how they do ratings for radio? They literally send out physical books in the mail to random addresses that say, what stations did you listen to this week? And then people will write down like, oh, I listened to Fox or I listened to uh, ABC or I listened to this today. And then they will get, you know, these booklets back. And by the way, they only send out like a, a 150 of them. They don't send out hundreds of thousands. And they'll take that and they'll just average it across the entire nation and go, oh, well, if we send out 200 booklets and fucking uh, 100 people sent 
said back that they listen to some radio. That means that 50% of the population of Australia listens to radio every day, and every day they listen to these stations. So Fox has this many hundred thousand people listening, and it's all just a scam to trick advertisers. So they can go to these advertisers and they go, oh, we got our radio sur- survey back, and, you know, it turns out this many hundreds of thousands of people listen to the radio when really it was like maybe 60 people wrote down on a piece of paper that they fucking listened to it, and then the radio averages it and goes, yeah, look, you should pay us a million dollars. They they have um, they have here, so Who Do You Think You Are, which was on before mm. you, had 158,000 people. No way. That was just before the show you were on, and that was at 7 p.m. And that that's the top program on SBS that day. No way. <laughs> oh, so I'm like actually right. More people watch my video than the program. Yeah. I, Dude, if I'm reading this correctly. Why yeah. do they have fucking ten camera people? There was a makeup lady. There was catering. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Why is there so much money in these things that make no money and get no people watching them? SPS I get, right? That's fine. It's a government-funded thing. I think that that's really good because government-funded TV channels and radio stations put stuff to air that no other network would. But I don't understand why television, radio has all this fucking money and all these fucking employees when it's all a scam. They get less views than the online stuff. And even if they get a similar amount of views, they're way less engaged views. I can literally see that like 70% of people who watch my videos make it to the end versus radio who go, oh, yeah, we got 60 people to write into a book that they heard Fox once in an Uber. Mm -hmm. So that'll be $100,000, thanks. It's all a scam. You know what it is? It's because uh, in radio and TV, they have an entire sales department. They have people there. I've seen it. It's like 60 cunts working at desks on the phone every day calling Mazda and Toyota and talking to other fucking brand deal people who who their job is to get ads on platforms. So they're talking to a guy whose job it is to spend money that isn't his and, and, the, and, and, it's, and it's the guy's job to take money from a guy who doesn't have the money and then give it to someone else. It's like two people who don't have money exchanging it for shit that they don't even care about. Like the sales guy doesn't care that the the figures that they're giving to the advertiser are bullshit and the advertising guy doesn't give a fuck whether or not it actually converts because it's not really his business, it's not really his money and his boss can't tell whether or not it actually works, right? So $100,000 just goes from one guy who doesn't own it to another guy who won't keep it and then... That's how it all keeps fucking spinning and it's all a scam. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here in my red chair, right, going, oh, can you please buy a T-shirt? I'm getting the same amount of views. Look, guys, what I'm saying is me screaming about anti-vaxxers and pussies is much more valuable than SBS doing an hour-long documentary on the refugee crisis, okay? <laughs> Anyway, speaking of getting paid, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawn Mower 3.0. The best ball bag trimmer in the game. Something I use frequently on my nuts and my face. Because I'm not a coward. Mm. Okay? All right? Look at this. Look at my neck. Nice and trimmed. Looks good. Did my mustache just yesterday. Looks great. All right? Got rid of all of the extra hairs around my beard that don't really connect to the rest of it. You can't even tell. Because I use the Manscaped Lawn Mower 4.0. The best ball bag face trimmer in the game. Ladies, you can use it for yourself. Okay? My girls used it. Works great. No damage to the extra bits that you guys are self-conscious about. All right? (laughs) Manscaped.com. Use the Lawn Mower 4.0. What's funny about that? There's nothing funny about women's body issues, mate. That's a serious (laughs) issue. Hey! I didn't say anything. Yeah, see, Keelan? Look. This is this is a feminist workspace, <laughs> and there's nothing funny about that. I didn't say anything. Okay? He's lying. All right? Stop trying to gaslight her. <laughs> Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawn Mower 4.0. They also have a bunch of uh, body wash products. They've got uh, <laughs> Keelan's favorite two-in-one <laughs> shampoo and conditioner. What's funny about that? Every time I say two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, nothing, you laugh. Nothing's funny about it. That's right. It's a good product. But you know what is good? What? Their roll-on deodorant. Oh, yeah, I gave you the roll-on. You've used it? Because I don't use roll-on. I use the spray. The spray is really good. How's the roll-on? Roll-on's good. Yeah, that's good. Does it roll? 
Is it on? You've got yeah, it on now? It's on now, yeah. That's good. How does it compare to other roll-ons? Yeah, it's better. Sorry? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's better. It sounded like you said it's bad. Be- better. better. Oh, better. good. Better. Right. And what code should people use to get their own? Come on, bro. Spears? Yeah, for 20% yeah. off and free shipping. <laughs> Manscaped.com. Thank you to Manscaped. Support the brands that support the show. That's how we keep it all spinning, all right? It's either this or I take my fucking ass to SBS. Get paid heaps more and get way less views, all right? Let's go. Cool. Um, also, join the Patreon, okay? Or else. What else did I want to talk about here? Oh, yeah, I left a, I left a, a green screen out. Uh, the one thing that I couldn't fit in the car was like a, a big bag of keel and stuff and a green screen. <laughs> so what I, <laughs> what I decided to do was like I just uh, – I always like liked uh, seeing like um, uh, influencers or comedians or, or like uh, musicians just leaving shit in public for people to find. Uh, so I just like – At first, I left the green screen. I'm just going to put it like uh, there's like a little mini driveway next to the house. And I was like, I'm just going to leave it there because I was worried about like a stranger getting it and someone who like wasn't one of you guys getting it, uh, which I didn't want to happen, obviously. But then I was like, oh, well, if I just like broadcast the house that I no longer live at, there might be like just, you know, dozens of people turning up to this house looking like they're about to break in. Mm. I just didn't want to broadcast my address. So I went around the corner and I found like a public place and like a hidden spot and I left this big green screen. It's like an Elgato green screen. Really good thing. It's like $250, I think. Left it there and I was like, oh, this is for a creator. And then I was like, dear God, I hope someone who like resells doesn't get this, you know, because I would do that, you know. Like if I saw someone go, oh, I've left this really expensive thing that you could probably resell on eBay here, come get it. I would go get it. 100%. 100%. 250 bucks for free. Easy deal. I'm not going to use it. But someone uh, who was an actual streamer uh, got it and they're using it. And that's really cool. So shout out to that guy. Can't remember his name. Probably should have done it. That would have been useful. Anyway. Tom Brady's come back from retirement. <laughs> Segway King. All right. They should call this Segway Sundays. I reckon. Gone from, like, giving some kind of free green screen, forgetting his name, going, oh, I should have plugged him. Anyway, Tom Brady. <laughs> Welcome to Segway Sundays, guys. Smooth the segways in the, in the podcast sphere. Uh, Tom Brady's come back from retirement. Uh, he's, like, the oldest American football player there's been, like, quarterback, right? One of the best ever. Uh, and he retired. And I actually... I actually thought this might happen because I don't know too much about the guy, but I know that any sportsman who's still a sportsman at that age and still really good and who – because if you're like – if you're an older sportsman, the only reason you're still playing is because you're incredibly good and you don't need money anymore, especially American ones, right? So he wouldn't need money ever again in his life. So the only reason he's doing it is because he wants to be the fucking greatest and he's addicted to it, right? Which I can respect. You know, I love being good at comedy. I love doing it all the time. And I don't see myself ever stopping. And it's not for money, right? Even if I was making, you know, I'm not, I'm not making millions of dollars. I'm doing okay, right? But if I, if I were making like tens of millions of dollars or hundreds of millions like these guys are, I would still be doing it and I would be like, oh, well, it's not about the money anymore. Right, so Tom Brady retired, uh, but the game that he retired on, he lost. So did he? I think so. I don't think. I don't think so. You don't think so? I'm pretty sure he won because it was that's the retirement came like pretty perfectly. No, no, no. Playoff loss. Oh. All right, Brady threw the ball during the Buccaneers' home playoff loss. I'm yeah, I'm pretty certain of that. His final game ever, he lost. Right, and I saw that and I was like. I was just I was just thinking like if I was going out to retire my final gig ever like maybe I'm in my 70s or 80s or whatever right whatever when my brain's still working okay that's what's really cool about comedy is you you as long as your brain works you really can do it forever like if I if I get fucking arthritis and I can't walk anymore I can still wheel myself out and if my if my mouth and my brain works I can still make people laugh right in fact I might even say that I'd be funnier in a wheelchair than out of one Okay, Um, but right, he went out on a loss and I was thinking like, man, if I went out to retire and I bombed, I don't think I could end it there. I would have to go, actually, 
this next gig is going to be my last gig. Mm. And that's what's happened. Tom Brady, after being in retirement for a couple weeks, really, has come out and gone, all right, I've realized that my place is still on the field and not in the stands. And he's come out of retirement, which is great for Tom. Really, really great for Tom. Really great for the fans. Really great for the team. Great for the sport of football. I think it's a cool thing. Terrible for his kids. Horrible for his wife. You know they had a big fight, but whatever. That's what it is, okay? You're going to have him for 40 years after footy. I mean, he's going to be drooling for 20 of them because his job is like running into 300 kilo men head first, Mm -hmm. right? But, you know, you might have a good 10 years before he forgets your name. (laughs) The real loser of this is the guy who spent 518,000 US dollars on Tom Brady's last football. <laughs> and he paid for it hours before Tom announced that he's coming out of retirement, <laughs> right? So the the football is now tanked in value 96%. And the and, <laughs> and so here we, here we go. The bidder who paid five hundred eighteen thousand dollars for Tom Brady's final touchdown pass football will likely have to pay the full price, despite the athlete coming out of retirement. The buyer, whose identity has not been disclosed, uh, made a, a bid of four hundred thirty-two thousand dollars, which adds up to five hundred eighteen with taxes and fees. Twenty-one hours later, Brady sent out a tweet saying, "I've realized my place is still on the field and not in the stands." If the football was to go on sale now, it would be only worth $20,000, says an appraiser. That is fucking crazy. Analysts said that the listing was 100% true and accurate at the time of sale. Man, that's like... Surely the guy should get his money back. It was true at the time of sale, yes, but... I don't know. I guess. I guess you know. That's. It's not the seller's fault, is it? Mm. Either. So it's like, why take half a mil from the seller? But who's the seller? Like, who is this being sold by? Do, these things usually go to like charity, right? The profits. Usually, I don't know. I guess it depends what it is. It doesn't. I'm not seeing anything about charity here. If it was about charity, you know that the news would mention that they go, "Oh, this guy's trying to take half a million away from charity," mm-hmm. right? Who is selling these things? That's what I don't get. Is it like the the team? Is it some guy who like scooped the ball up and ran away? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't say anything about who's selling it, but I, I feel like that's kind of bullshit. Right? I don't know. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be fucking mental. How angry you would be. But that really, that's the game, isn't it? If you're going to spend half a million on something that has no utility, like no use... That shit just happens, you know? Like a Pokemon card turns out to be fake or you buy an NFT and then the market crashes or you put half a million into fucking some obscure crypto and then TikTok stops talking about it so it tanks, right? That's. I feel like if you're spending half a million dollars on something, you should be able to afford to eat that loss. So that's the game. (laughs) I mean, yeah, that's... uh, I can't believe they made NFTs real. Someone spent half a million dollars on something and it was instantly worthless. <laughs> it's crazy. They made NFTs a real thing. Um, yeah, it doesn't say anything about who, like who, uh, who's actually selling it. Man, what a win! Because theoretically, right? If it's someone that's like uh, involved with football, that means that now they could make another half million dollar football sale, right? If it's like the actual team or the, the the team owner or the owner of the NFL or whatever the fuck it is, they would be cheering because not only have they got $500,000 now, they'll also get, they might get like $700,000 when Tom Brady dies during another game, right? The last football he touches before he gets his neck snapped by a younger quarterback. They'll make even more money. Anyway, guys, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. <laughs> Segway Sundays is ba- is back in full force. I, I reckon next episode my segue is going to be super strong. You you sit around and watch. If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. Is the part where you get to ask me questions, send me in uh, life advice questions, send me in a story that you would like your thoughts on, uh, and I will get back to you. Uh, with an answer. All right, first up, we've got an email here. Send yours through to podcast at loosespears.com. By the way, I do need emails. We're running low. Uh, Best friend betrayed my trust. 
Hi, Lewis. I'm 22 and started working in a factory two years ago and started dating my supervisor nearly a year ago. Okay, power dynamics, we love it. Since then, I've bought a house, cashed up, baller, queen, and we've moved in together. A few months ago, I got my best friend a job at the same company, but she's on a different shift to me, which is fine because I don't think I could stand working side by side with her for eight hours a day. Do women like their own friends? Uh, <laughs> hey, women like your best friend challenge. Impossible. <laughs> uh, have you ever? Have you ever like uh, seen two girls that are genuinely friends? I don't think I've. I, it's very rare. They, there are. They are out there, but so often. A girl will be like, oh, yeah, this is my best friend. And then I fucking hate her. She's annoying. Mm. Or like you'll always see. Here's the thing. Girls have this great ability to hang out with with, a, with like a group of, a big group of 15 chicks. Mm. And I feel like for men, you get to four, maybe five, and then it starts being fake. Because that's not, if you hang out with 10 plus people, that's not. 10 friends, that's a party. You know? I don't have 10 friends. Do you have 10 friends, Keelan? No, I don't have 10 friends. 10 friends that, that you could get in a room together and they all like each other? That's. A, I feel like that's what, that's what men are really good at is like not mixing friends that they know wouldn't get on. You know? I feel like girls make the mistake of going, I like this person and that person so they'll like each other. That's rarely the case. You know, like I've got a lot of friends that would terrify the fuck out of some of my other friends. So they don't mix. I like them and I like them, but I know they won't like each other. So I keep them separate. Men are really good at that. Girls are just like, yeah, I mean, I've got like six friends and my other friend has six friends. So we'll just bring all six friends each. And next thing you know, you got 20 chicks sitting at a table pulling each other's hair. Anyway, guys, dudes rock. Um, all right. I don't think I could stand around working side by side with her for eight hours a day. Last month, I found out that I was pregnant. Congratulations. And my boyfriend and I are very excited to start a family together. I told my immediate family and my best friend and told them all not to tell anyone because we, boyfriend and I, didn't want anyone else to know until the second trimester just in case something happened. Yeah, that's like a really common thing. You don't, because, you know, things go wrong, miscarriages happen. Uh, anything can happen in the first trimester. So you don't want everyone to know to make a big fuss because then you're going to make a very sad Facebook post and that's annoying. <laughs> this morning, my boyfriend and I were having our breakfast when he received a message from our operations manager. The person who hires, fires and takes employee complaints saying, I suppose congratulations are in order. My boyfriend asks, what does he mean? And the operations manager says, Nicola is having, having a baby. Congratulations. I immediately messaged my friend to ask if she told anyone, even though I specifically told her not to. She confirmed she told three people on day shift. That sucks. And those three are arguably the most gossipy. See, that's also a not a good thing to tell like other people in the workplace mm. because there's a lot of like discrimination against pregnant women or women that they know are about to become pregnant or are trying for a baby. There's so many stories of women not getting promotions they were probably owed or not getting considered for job roles at all because they have a long-term partner and are of like baby making age. So like that's very fucked of your friend to do. Mm. Uh, woke Spears coming out. With, with a bat. Um, uh, she confirmed she told three people. She then has the nerve to tell me that I can't be mad because everyone is happy for me and she can't understand if I'm a bit upset. What do I do? I've given her a list of reasons why I find this unacceptable, but she's really given me a big reason not to trust her with anything ever again. This may seem like a trivial issue, but it has really changed my perception of her. Uh yeah, that's uh, that sucks. I think that's like really disrespectful of your friend. I I I don't like people who have loose lips. It's it's a bad it's a bad trait. If someone tells you something in confidence and you tell like six other people, it's really not a it's not a good trait to have. Especially like something as sensitive as I I'm pregnant, but you know I'm at that stage where who knows if it'll last. That's like especially dangerous because. You know, God forbid, hope to God nothing happens in a successful pregnancy. But if it wasn't, then you've got to tell your whole workspace that, oh, actually, I've had a fucking miscarriage or something's gone wrong or 
that now we're not going to have it. And then you got to have that whole fucking doom and gloom in the office. Like that sucks. I think your friend's done the wrong thing there. And that's a disrespectful thing for them to do. Uh, fuck that bitch. Uh, yeah. I'll leave it there. All right. That's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, send your life advice questions to podcast at loosebeers.com. I'm going to continue on uh, exclusively on Patreon. Uh, join the, uh, the Patreon to get access to the Sunday supplement. There's like 28 episodes up there now. And you get access to the Discord. You get early access to the fire straight out of Frankston merch. We've got T-shirts and hoodies and stickers uh, and bundles to get those uh, early on Patreon as well. Thank you very much for, for – thank you very much for, for – I can't speak English. Thank you very much for watching, listening, and I hope you have a shit one. Bye.